Welcome to the 10 Minute Mindshift Podcast. I'm your host, Janet Kegel, certified life coach, weight loss coach, and lover of all things related to upleveling my life and yours. My goal is to help you get one step closer to your goal, whatever it is. My goal is not to keep you wrapped up in self help all day, just 10 minutes. And who doesn't have 10 minutes, right? Hey there, welcome back to the podcast. So happy to have you here. This has been a couple of weeks, let me tell you. If you've been following along with me on my journey with Dutch, you know that we made our first attempt at our second level scores for our bronze medal, and that happened on April 24th and 25th. What you don't know, due to the timing of how I record these episodes, is how it turned out and what happened. So I thought it would be fun to share a little behind the scenes stuff about the journey and give you some of the details as well as the results. And of course, and most importantly, what I learned and what you can learn and take away in pursuit of your own goals. All right, so this is episode number 57, Behind the Scenes of a Goal and Show Notes. Getting ready for a show like this one has a lot of details, first of all. Layer on working full-time, coaching, training rides, working out all the things. It's a lot. That is the case with anything that we are trying to accomplish. Sometimes we are taking extra courses or getting certified. Whatever you're adding into your life in pursuit of your goals, it can feel like a lot. One of the things that I learned super early was to stop thinking about it as being a lot and to start thinking about the next thing and then the next thing and then really focus on the task at hand. One of the things that I do work very hard at focusing on is keeping top of mind the blessing and good fortune that I get to experience in the process of working toward my goal. And you do too, whatever your goal is. So if you're taking extra college courses or certifications, or you're part of a weight loss program, that is all a blessing for you. And so look at it as that. Because here's the truth. If I only focused on the experience of it being a lot, it would for sure feel overwhelming and the entire experience would be different. It's important as you create your life, regardless of your goal, that you are very intentional about exactly how you want to experience the journey. It does not have to be overwhelming or chaotic or a lot. It can be whatever you desire the experience to be. If your journey is one to better health or more savings, managing your consumption in one area of your life, the experience doesn't have to be about the deprivation of the things that you are cutting out of your life. It can be all about what you are gaining in your results. So don't let your brain manage you in this area. So here's a little bit about my experience on this journey so that I can give you all the good, the bad, the beautiful, and the not so glamorous. The last six weeks have been all about mentally preparing, physically preparing, and logistically preparing. Our training rides kept getting better and better, but keep in mind, if you've been following along, I lost two weeks of riding and get very creative about maintaining my confidence and our connection on the ground. That obstacle taught me that training at Liberty is a game changer. So don't be concerned if you have an obstacle pop up. That's just something there to teach you a different way of doing things. So here's the lesson that I learned. An unexpected obstacle is not meant to tell you that you picked the wrong goal. It's meant to grow you, expand your thinking, expand your knowledge, expand your creativity, all the things. So many times when I'm working with clients, I will hear them say, I guess this just wasn't meant for me. No, it's meant for you, always. Leading up to our ride on the 24th, I got a few lessons in with my trainer, which is always super helpful. She's amazing. Another lesson on this journey for me is to become a student of your goal. I studied other successful riders. I took lessons when I could. I studied when I could. I immersed my brain in all things second level. So... I was feeling pretty ready right up until I tried to get Dutch into the trailer to head out. All of a sudden, I was faced with where I had lacked planning and attention to detail. He's fairly easy to load in my two-horse straight load, but this was a slant load, and it's step up, and it loads totally differently. I had practiced with a friend's trailer, just like mine, several weeks prior, and it was fine, but this was a little bit different than her trailer, so... After 45 minutes of try and it looked like I wasn't, it wasn't going to happen all by myself, I called in the reinforcements, hubby to the rescue. 
After a few more tries and a couple of disastrous moments, I was about two minutes away from saying, I guess this is not going to happen this weekend. I really don't even know how it happened, but all of a sudden he jumped in and I got him secured for the ride and off we were. Now, I don't recommend that this is a long-term method of loading for your horse for a show, but it was what we had to work with at the time and so I went with it. But here's the lesson. We are willing to quit way too soon. Sometimes we are quitting right before the breakthrough. Keep going. Try one more time and then one more after that. Just keep going. So we got to the menu and I got them all unloaded and set up and then I set up the living quarters. Um, We got checked in and Dutch and I walked around the venue for about 45 minutes. I did a little training ride that Friday night in the arena just long enough to get him used to riding with the flowers and all the things. You would be amazed at what horses actually spook at. So that was Friday. Then Saturday came. My first attempt at my second level scores was scheduled for 145 that afternoon. And I had a game plan all lined out in my head of how I was going to hand walk him several times during the morning, let him have some some grazing time. I planned on a warm-up that gave him plenty of time to get used to the loudspeakers and the energy of the show. And I think it was about noon, and the wind really picked up. I think it was like 15 to 20 miles per hour. It really didn't seem to affect him and the loudspeakers were a non-issue so I was pretty feeling I was feeling pretty confident at this point but I want to start out by telling you the things that did not go well so during my warm-up I had two things happen number one my whip broke in all the years of showing and I've been showing for about five or six now years now my whip has never broken my whip broke the second thing that has never happened to me before happened my hair thingy fell out. So in dressage, you have to keep your hair up off your neck. And I have a little hair contraption that's pretty handy, but it fell out. So there was my hair all loose. And that's just no way to go down center line. So luckily, I had my husband and a friend who could run back to the stall area and grab another whip and hair thingy. And then it was time to ride. Another error that I made was that I relied on the ring steward to tell me when to go. And I was still in the warm-up arena when I should have been going into the test arena. I learned not to depend on the ring steward. Count on me. Even though it felt like I didn't let it bother me and I was feeling really focused, clearly that was not a great first impression for the judge. So, As soon as we got to the gate, the whistle blew for our test to start, and we started down center line. As soon as we did, Dutch started calling out for his buddies that he had apparently already bonded with in the warm-up arena. I should add that Dutch is an incredibly social creature and bonds with all of his stall mates and pasture mates very quickly. I'm not surprised he bonded with his warm-up arena buddies, even though I didn't notice it. So, after I got his attention, we rode our test. Here is how that went. He over-anticipated every canter departure and was really trying hard to focus, but he was clearly distracted. It was not our worst ride, but... I knew it wasn't our best ride either. To be honest, in that moment, I was more excited to have had our first second level ride behind us rather than being disappointed, but I knew that that ride was not going to be good enough for the 60% score that we needed, and it wasn't. But here's what the score was. 59.865. That sort of blew my mind a little bit because I felt like we did so much worse than how we scored. So even though we didn't get our score, I also knew that that was not even close to our best. Believe it or not, that thought was comforting. I knew we had more to give. So what to do when you attempt something like that and it's a fail? Evaluate. And I evaluate in the following ways. More, better, different, less. Ask yourself these questions. What will you do more of? What will you do better? What will you do differently? What will you do less of? This evaluation works for everything, absolutely everything. I actually learned this concept in banking as part of a sales management training program that we had. Doing this evaluation works even if you didn't experience a fail, even if you nailed it, evaluate it. So 
I did an evaluation and I decided a few things. The warm up was too long and I practiced too many of the test elements during the warm up. I nagged him. I nagged him a lot during the warm up. I let him have too much time to take interest in other horses in the warm up arena. I didn't know which rider I was going after and I relied on the ring steward to tell me. My second attempt at my second level scores was scheduled for Sunday at 2.10. And so, after I collected my thoughts, I decided the following. I would not warm up nearly as long, so less of a warm up. I would not practice any of the elements during the warm up ring at any letter that would be during the test. I would ride him more forward and I would not warm up near other horses. I made sure to know who I was after and I didn't rely on the ring steward. So, how did that go? That ride ended up being a 65%. And here's the thing. Even before I saw the score, I knew it was a well-ridden and very solid ride for us. It was one of those rides where it didn't even matter what the score was because the connection was so good, it felt magical. Now, was it perfect? Heck no. Do we have work to do? For sure. But I can see clearly how far we've come from six weeks ago when I had originally decided to go for our second level scores. We had fails and we had wins. We learned and we grew and we evolved together. I was able to test my energy level and my stamina. I was able to quickly change strategy and create a different outcome as a result. And that's exactly what you can do at any point of your journey. Just stop and evaluate and then proceed. So it's the end of the show. And now we have to figure out how to get Dutch into the trailer to go home. I use the same evaluation strategy, more, better, different, less. I looked at what I did on Friday that worked and what didn't, and I created a plan from there. I recognized that I had a very urgent energy level on Friday, and so my thoughts on Sunday were, it will take as long as it takes. I have to thank my husband for that one, because when I told him a few thoughts that I had about getting him trailered and home, he said to me, It will take as long as it takes. I am in no hurry. A huge relief, of course, and I just planned on it taking whatever time it needed. Fortunately, we were one of the last riders of the day, and I could back up the trailer to a strategic position that eliminated a lot of options for him. But here is what really worked. I gave him the luxury of time. I didn't think this is taking too long. I thought it will happen when it happens. I let him get curious about the trailer and smell it and think about it, gave him lots of love and cookies. And when he looked in the trailer, all of a sudden he just jumped in. Now I'm not going to profess that he was super happy about jumping in, but it was his idea and he did it. We definitely have more work to do. So this isn't such a dramatic and traumatic experience for him, but I was surprised and delighted at how little time it actually took when we took time off of the table of expectations. So I've already given you a few lessons along the way, but here are six more lessons to add. Number one, give your goal the time it takes. Set a date and time for sure, but be willing to move it out if you need to. Number two, evaluate everything. Not criticize, evaluate. There's a difference. Number three, be willing to go to plan B. Number four, always have a plan B. Number five, you are either winning or learning. I am thrilled at the 65% score. I'm not going to lie, but I have to admit the 59.865 ride, that is the one that taught me the most. Number six, the human that you are becoming is the goal. The goal is the cherry on top. Don't lose sight of who you are becoming on this journey. All right, my friends, that is what I have for you today. And because of the timing of how I record and publish these episodes, I have actually had the chance to make another ride for my other second level score. I am thrilled to report we got it. We rode Saturday, May 8th and got a score of 67.297 to wrap up our second level scores for my bronze medal journey. That makes me two thirds of the way to my goal and I could not be happier with what I have learned on this journey. So there will be more to come, but for now, go have the best week ever. (music) 
that's a wrap of the 10 minute mind shift podcast i hope that you were able to experience your own mind shift today listen if you're ready to take this work to the next level i highly recommend life by design academy it's my one-on-one coaching program that offers you a transformation at the speed of life 